I really think that if I didn't have a message to preach tonight, I could have just turned y'all loose. I like what I feel in God's house. How about you? Let's go ahead and love him a little bit. Let's worship the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being here. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to remind you that this morning we had special prayer for families this week that have experienced just unprecedented tragedy in their family. And I want to encourage you throughout this week. You say, oh, Brother Cam, tell us who it is. That's not necessary. God knows who's it is, who it is. But I'm asking you to pray. I'm asking you to be very conscious of the fact that when one member of the body suffers, the Bible said we all suffer. And it is very important that in times of tragedy that we hold each other up in prayer. Can you say amen? Amen. I told the ministers in the office before church, I said, you know, things go bad for all of us. There's no such thing as you or I being exempt from some tragic situation visiting our family or our home. But what I found out after 45 years of ministry is that kind of no matter how bad it gets, There's always somebody that's got something really, 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 really worse than what I'm having to deal with. And when we know that folks are in pain, we really, that's when the body kicks. Are you glad you belong to a church like this? That's when the body kicks in. That's when body ministry becomes really, really important. So I want to challenge you this week to pray for those that have experienced just again unprecedented tragedy in their families and in their homes this last week this morning i begin a message entitled the power of a revelation and in that message i told you that i'm asking god for three revelations for this church on this day i want three revelations to become very vivid very clear in our minds and in our hearts. Number one, it's the power of Satan. I want us to understand the power of Satan. It is the most misunderstood of the three revelations, I'm sure. Thank you, Hollywood, for making the devil ten times more powerful than he is. Every time they make any kind of a movie that's got a devil or some spirit in it, man, they make it as spooky as they possibly can, and they make him be able to do all kind of things he cannot do. Hello? Hello? Don't come to me with your stories about how powerful the devil is unless you're ready to get an on-the-spot Bible study about how powerful God is. Second revelation I'm asking God to give us, and for many it's just a renew or enhanced revelation, and that is the power of God. Everybody said the power of God. I think if we've ever needed a revelation of the power of God, we need a revelation of how much power he possesses right now. In the day we live in, it is an important revelation for us to have. The third revelation and the one I didn't get to that I will deal with tonight is a revelation of the power in us. The power in us. And that's where I'm going to focus my message tonight. I'll review a little bit, and then I'll go right into finishing the message that I began this morning. Would you lift both your hands to heaven, and would you pray that God would allow a spirit of revelation to fill this house? God, let revelation fill this house. Let revelation fill our minds and our hearts, I pray. A revelation of the power of Satan, a revelation of the power of God, and a revelation of the power in us. That is my prayer. 
God, this is an apostolic church. This is a powerful church. This is an important church. Not just this one local assembly, but all apostolic churches. The apostolic body that we belong to. Lord, I pray right now that you would let revelation sweep across not only this church, but across our state. Let revelation sweep across our nation. Let revelation sweep around our world. We need a revelation of the power of Satan. We need a revelation of the power of God. We need a revelation of the power that works in us. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you and you may be seated. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 17 said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and he's talking about the spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know. I literally could have called this message that ye may know. Because that's really what revelation is. Is when God makes us know something we didn't know before. When God opens our understanding. When God shines a light on a subject. That's what revelation does for us. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power verse 21 far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come this morning when I was talking to you about the power of Satan or the power that Satan has. I want you to understand something today. It's not me trying to psych you out. It's not me trying to hype you up. It's not me trying to give you some false narrative that you can go on for a while before you find out that it's false. None of that is at work here. I am absolutely deadly sincere when I tell you that the devil has absolutely no power of his own. I want you to be absolutely sure and aware and understand a revelation, if you please, that God has absolute power. I want you to understand that God has complete power. I want you to understand that God has all or total power power. He don't have some power. He don't have a portion of the power. He don't simply have more power than the devil. God has all power. All power in heaven and earth belongs to him. Somebody said amen. He gave us, the church, that same authority and power over Satan. He has power over Satan, but I want you to understand, and this may be more important for you to understand in our present day or our present world, and that is that you have power over Satan. He gave you the same power that he has over the devil. I wish y'all could see my notes. My notes would make you laugh. Because everywhere in my notes that I write devil, I write it with a little d and underline the little d to remind me it's a little d. Everywhere I write Satan in my notes, I write it with a little s. When I got the devil and God in the same sentence, I put God in 50 point bold type and I put the devil in small case, thin letters and about 10 points. Say, why you do all that? I just want to remind myself while I'm preaching to you what I really know, what I really believe, how it really is. Somebody said amen. 
Satan has delegated power or delegated authority. I told you this morning, what does it mean that he has delegated power or authority? Number one, it means he has none of his own. Hello? None of his own. He has delegated power and delegated authority. The example I used today was the example of Job. How that in two chapters, Job 1 and Job 2, God asked the devil, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil responded, God, you put a hedge around him, you put a hedge around his family, and you put a hedge around all that he's got. And I can't touch him because of that hedge that you put around him. I want to repeat to you today night that the devil has to have permission to touch you and when God said okay you can touch him I'll take the hedge down but here's the rules you can't take his life you can't take his wife's life here's the rules that I'm going to set for you when God does give the devil a little bit of power he also gives him the parameters of just how far he can go and where he can operate and only where he can operate. You need to quit thinking that the devil can kill you because he can't. And if he could, I'm absolutely convinced you would already be dead. You need to quit thinking that the devil can turn your world upside down. That the devil can get you fired, cause you to lose your house, put you in the hospital, take your life. I'm telling you, it is amazing to me the things that church people believe about the devil. I told you this morning we quit doing testimony service because everybody get up and talk about the devil more than they do God. How bad things are, what the devil's doing. I just was sitting there always waiting. People got done saying, oh, the devil been on me all week. Devil did this, devil did that. I just waiting on somebody to say, bless his holy name. It's the only thing short. We need to understand, folks, that the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. That the devil does not ever tell the truth. The devil does not present himself in a truthful way. If you believe what Hollywood says about the devil, you're believing a lie. If you believe what some non-spiritual person writes about the devil, you're believing a lie. Oh, I'm going to make some of you mad. You might as well just put your seatbelt on. Get ready. Get mad. You know me, folks. It's got to be in the book or I'm not going to believe it. I don't care who wrote it. I don't care who wrote a book out there. If it's not in that old black back book, I'm not going to believe it. You want to follow the charismatics? Go ahead. Charismatics came up with the doctrine of generational curses. That if your great-great-grandpa that died before you were ever born was a scallywag, they believe that his sin's going to be passed to four generations. I'm telling you, I'd walk off this platform right now and I would never serve a God again that that held me accountable for the sins of my grandfather. I would never serve him again. I know some of you sitting down. Oh boy, you got to understand. I, I've, been, I've been working with people for 45 years. I know people as good as you mechanics know cars. As good as Brother Edwards knows building. As good as a doctor knows the human body. I know people. That's my job. And you can sit there mad if you want to. Because the charismatics taught you that the sins of your fathers is why you can't get ahead. If that is true, why repent? If that's true, why get baptized? If that's true, why be filled with the Holy Ghost? Your daddy might have been an alcoholic. But God's not going to judge you for alcoholism. That's just some of the lies that people make up about the power of the devil. It's a lie. So then what does the verse mean? 
Sins visited the fourth generation. Somebody said, oh, Brother Hurley said it last week. He said statistically, 75% of all drug addicts had a parent that was drug addict. 60% of all alcoholics had a parent that was an alcoholic. 70% of all people that abused were abused themselves. That's what it means the sins of the fathers are visited on their children down to four generations. We pass bad habits down from one to another. But honey, that's what the altar's for. Honey, that's what the baptistry on the other side of this wall is for. The Bible said we're buried with him in baptism and we rise to walk in the newness of life. The Bible said we're a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away and behold all things become new. Refuse to repeat or believe the lies about the devil. My, 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 my. He has delegated power and authority. None of his own. There's at least three places. There may be more. At least three places in your Bible where the devil is referred to as a prince. He's called in one place the prince of the air. Y'all see any in here? That's kind of like saying you're the prince of nothing, doesn't it? Hello? There's another place where it said he's the prince of Tyree. There's a third place in your Bible where it says he's the prince of this world. See, out there, that proves it, preacher. He's got that. No, it don't. The very word prince means he's under the king. The very word prince means he has no power of his own. He's operating on somebody else's power. We need to quit believing the lies of the devil. Whenever Jesus arrived at the shores of the Gadarenes, the Bible said there come one running out of the tomb possessed with devils. The demoniac of Gadarenes, the Bible calls him. And what is the first thing that happens? When this demon runs up to Jesus, he throws himself down and here's what he says. The devil's in him. I'm going to say it again. The devil's in him said to Jesus, Master, suffer us to go into the herd of swine. Would you give us permission to depart this old boy you're about to release here, this old boy you're about to deliver, this old boy you're about to fill with your spirit and make him a brand new creature. Would you let us go over in that herd of pigs? And Jesus said, go. They had to have his permission. They go into a herd of what was it? Somebody help me. 2,000? 2,000 pigs. Devils come out of one man. Everybody hold up one finger. One finger. One single man. Devils come out of one single man. And they go into a herd of 2,000 swine. And the Bible said immediately the 2,000 pigs run down the hill, threw themselves in the sea, and drowned. You know what that means? That means those demons were suicide devils. They were killer devils. They had the spirit that could kill life. And Jesus cast them out of one man. They had to get permission to go into a herd of pigs. They killed 2,000 pigs. Are you ready? But they could not kill one single man without God's permission. Oh, you might as well stay standing because that one man... That one man had never repented. That one man wasn't baptized in Jesus' name. That one man didn't have the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you as a Holy Ghost bound believer, a hundred million devils can't stop you. Oh, you ought to be clapping your hands and shouting. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
But Brother Cunningham, should we adore the devil? No. Because you let down your guard and your flesh takes over and your flesh loves him. Your flesh loves what he loves. Your flesh wants to do what he wants you to do. The devil's not our biggest problem, apostolic sir or ma'am. The, the biggest problem you and I have is us, our own flesh. Keeping our own flesh under control is the biggest task of our lifetime. My, 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 my. Second revelation we talked about this. I'll not finish again tonight if I keep doing this. Revelation number two is the power of God. All I'm going to say to you in repeating this or, or reviewing Revelation number two, I want to remind you that all power and authority comes from God. All. Everybody said all. all. Jesus said all power in heaven and earth belongs to me. The Bible said strength belongs to God. It's his. It's his possession. He owns it. It's his. Anybody else that's got strength, any other power that's got strength, it is a delegated strength that God gives. Clap your hands and say, I understand. I didn't give you this verse today. They don't have a slide for it. Romans 13 and 1 in the expanded version of your Bible said, There is no authority. There is no authority unless God has given the power to rule. Everybody say delegated authority. Say delegated power. There is no authority unless God has given the power to rule. It's a little clearer in the amplified version of the Bible. The amplified version says it this way, for there is not authority except from God, granted by his sanction and permission, and those which exist, those authorities which exist, have been put in place by God. I don't want you walking out of here cocky. I don't want you walking out of here thinking you're tough in your own person. But I don't want you to ever be afraid of the devil again, not one moment of one day. Say amen, somebody. Revelation number three, the power in us. The power that is in the church. The power that is specifically in an apostolic church. A church that believes apostolic doctrine. A church that believes in apostolic truth and righteousness. A church that believes in apostolic worship. Apostolic giving. Apostolic outreach. Are you glad we hammer apostolic around here all the time? What does apostolic mean? It means like the apostles. I want to go all the way back to the church that Jesus built and do everything in my power to be just exactly like them. I want to believe what they believe. I want to preach what they preached. I want to do what they did. Here's the reason. I want to see what they saw. Somebody said amen. We have the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. Are you thankful for that? Come on, clap your hands. Are you thankful for that? Just equally as important as the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. Some of you sitting there thinking, oh my God, what's he going to say? What could be as important as the revelation of the mighty God in Christ? Here it is. We have the revelation of the mighty God in Christ in this apostolic church. We need a revelation of the mighty God in us. The mighty God in us. I want you to understand that the same way, some of you aren't going to like this, but the same way that God was in Jesus, God is in you. The Bible said your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What's that mean? It means that God lives in you. God dwells in you. You don't go somewhere and say, okay, God, would you meet me right here? And then you leave that place and go over here and say, okay, God, I'm over here now. God, come meet me over here now. Uh-uh, honey. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of the living God moves on the inside of you. It dwells in you. Your body becomes the temple of the Holy Ghost and everywhere you go the Holy Ghost goes. Everywhere you go God goes. If you wake up in the middle of the night to a fevered baby you don't got to pray God down. God is there. Yeah. 
my wife and I and Elisa, when Elisa, how was Elisa when we had that horrible car accident? Three years old, just tiny. She's in the back seat. And she's 40 now, so 37 years. She's enjoying me telling you that. 37 years ago, they didn't have car seats like we got now that look like an electric chair or something. When, when, when we were kids and when Lisa was a kid, it was actually all right to get up in the back window and lay down and take a nap under the window in the sun. Boy, it's a great place to take a nap. And, and it, it, you know, seat belts. We own cars that didn't even have seat belts in them. We come up over a hill. We, we were close to Withville, Virginia, that area of the state, way over on the other side of the state. And we topped one of those mountain hills over there that went up and then right back down. And in the rear view mirror, we saw a car that nearly left the road coming over that deal and we knew we were just on it we knew there was no way that dude gonna land on us he gonna hit us full speed and he did and all there was time to do was my wife hollered out Jesus that's it there wasn't time for no big prayer. There wasn't no time to say, okay, God, we're at latitude, longitude, such and such. We need you here right now. There was no time to say, God, we're outside with Phil, Virginia. Would you please come find us right now? No, no, no. Honey, you need to understand that everywhere you go, God goes. I said everywhere you go, God goes because he lives and dwells inside of you. I'm not trying to start a new doctrine, but do you know that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God? Do you understand that? Does anybody have a different view than that? It's the Spirit of God. It's not a third God. The Bible said in John 4, 24, God is a Spirit. God is a Spirit. Can I tell you that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, it would be just as accurate to say, hey, today I got filled with Holy God. I got filled with Holy God. It isn't the spirit of a third person. It is the spirit of God. God is a spirit. And when you got the Holy Ghost, you got God. And the Holy Ghost that's in you is God in you. And God goes where you go. My, 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 my. Brother Cecil came in this morning. Got a big old cut down the side of his face. Where's Bob at? First thing I thought, Bob, when he walked in, I thought, oh my God, Bob let Cecil use the chainsaw. <laughs> God, if anybody on the job's going to get hurt, Cecil's going to get hurt. Yeah. A big old whopping log on the back of the trailer that's being held straight up in the air by a block that's under it. But Cecil thought he wanted to move it. So what'd he do? He took a hammer and busted the block. So the log rolled over on. So oh, Brother Cain, that could have killed him. No, it couldn't have. Not unless God's done with him. Oh, you, you, you don't want to say amen to that? I said, no, it couldn't. No, it couldn't. Not unless God's done with him. You are invincible until God's finished with you. You're a child of God. The power of God lives and dwells inside of you. The power that created the universe. The power that is all power in heaven and in earth. Clap your hands and shout amen. Shout amen. The Bible said in Ephesians 6 and 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the area of education. Be strong in the area of relationships. you got to build those important relationships. Politicians and bankers and lawyers. Huh? That ain't what's saving you. I'm sorry. If you think it's your education that's keeping you safe, the only thing you got out of education was you now belong in a nut house. I'm going to tear up some of you's minds here. 
There's only one reason to go to college. Oh, you kids, I'm ordering you under the authority of the Holy Ghost not to use this on your parents. <laughs> There's only one reason to go to college, is they teach you how to study. They don't teach you nothing there worth remembering. Hello? You're going to hear the biggest bunch of trash you ever heard in your life while you're in college. I love what Brother Tenney used to say. Everybody needs to get a good education and then get over it. But they do teach you how to study. And I'm telling you, that's the most important thing you can get while you're there is learning how to research and study and then put it into research and study in the Word of God and become one of the greatest men or women of God that's ever lived. But if you're thinking education's what getting you through, there's some of you in here that think you're so smart, you think your smarts is getting you through. There's some of you in here that think you're good looking and your looks are getting you through. Nobody but you and the spouse think so. And she's lying to you because she loves you. What are you raising your hand about over there? My wife's over there, amen, amen, amen. Jesus, help us. You mean you've been lying all these 42 years? Your good looks isn't getting you through. Your friends aren't getting you through. You're not successful because of your education or your intellect or how quick-witted you are. Somebody needs to understand, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. If you're going to have an area that you're an expertise in, let it be my relationship with God, my reliance on God, my faith in God. Somebody shout yes. yes. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now I know I've been hammering this. I'm going to hammer it a little bit more. But if you have a revelation of, the, of what it means to be strong in the Lord, if you have a revelation of the power of his might, then you are going to stop being afraid of the devil. Isn't it amazing that 30 seconds ago y'all were roaring and I said stop being afraid of the devil and three people. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says, are you ready for this? For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. I said for God hath not given us a spirit of fear. I'm going to say it again. If you've got fear, it didn't come from God. If you're afraid, it didn't come from God. If you're anxious, it didn't come from God. If you're all stressed out, it didn't come from God. If you're dismayed, it didn't come from God. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Here's what God gave us. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Oh, preacher, I'm afraid of the stock market. Really? Who gave you the money that you're playing around in the stock market with? Oh, preacher, I'm afraid of this or that. I'm telling you everything we got, all good gifts come from above. Everything I have in the world come from Him. And if I lose it all, I've got faith He's going to give it back to me again. One of the most powerful things about Abraham, who's the only man in the Bible called the father of the faithful, was when God told Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son, to the top of the mountain and sacrifice him there. The Bible said the next morning, everybody say the next morning. Say no hesitation. Some of us had had to go into six weeks of prayer meeting, called every prayer warrior in the church, went online to some hotline prophet, and we'll keep asking until somebody says, you can have 500 people say, no, that sounds like God. And you let one, 501 said, well, I don't think you got to do that. I say, boy, good to hear from God. 
Abraham, take your son, your only son, to the top of the mountain and sacrifice him. And the Bible said early the next morning, he put the fire and the wood on the back of a donkey. He got that boy up out of bed and said, we're going on a trip. He took some serp- servants with him and they head out toward the mountain. When they get to the bottom of the mountain, the servant said, Master, said, we're going to go with you to the top of the mountain. He said, no, you're going to stay here and me and the lad will return to you. Say, oh, there's proof. He never intended to sacrifice that boy, no, because he goes on and tells us later, the Apostle Paul talks about it in the the hall of faith. He said Abraham knew that even if he sacrificed that boy to God, that God would raise him up again because he was a child of promise that him and the boy, he said, we'll be back. They're heading up the mountain. And that boy said words that must have stuck a knife in daddy's heart. He said, Father, we have the fire and we have the wood, but where's the sacrifice? And Abraham, the father of the faithful, said, Son, God will provide himself a perfect sacrifice. I'm telling somebody here today, put your faith in God. Don't put your faith in the world. Don't put your faith in money. Don't put your faith in materialism. Don't put your faith in a job. Put your faith in God. Clap your hands and shout yes. Shout yes. Here's a revelation I want you to get. I want you to get this revelation and I want you to own it when you walk out of here. You. You. As a Jesus name. Holy Ghost filled believer are more powerful than the devil. I'm going to prove it to all of you that don't believe it yet. It isn't God and then the devil and then the church. It is God with a powerful church that all have power over the devil. He's way down there somewhere, honey. He is not over you. He's under you. What did God say? I put him under your feet. He didn't say I put him over your head. I put him under your feet. Clap your hands, somebody. You as a child of God. You as a child of God, you are more powerful than the devil. Oh, Brother Cunningham, if I can get him and him and him and him and him, and if we can pray hard enough, we can overcome. No. No, don't take all that. You. You mean me? Yeah. Do you mean a teenager? Yeah. You mean mamas? Yeah. You mean grandmas? Yeah. You mean dads? Yeah. You are more powerful than the devil. Well, we'll see if we can do it. I'm not not trying to make you feel more powerful than you are. I'm not offering you some false narrative here. This isn't intended, as I said, to hype you up tonight. I want revelation to fill this house. I want you to walk out of here knowing who you are. I want you to walk out of here knowing the power that you possess. I want you to walk out of here knowing what happened whenever you took his name. When you took his name in water baptism. When you were filled with his spirit. I want you to understand what you become. You become a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Bible said we're a royal priesthood. We're a chosen people. There's not enough preaching about that. Hello? Come on somebody. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. How many of you got the Holy Ghost? Clap your hands. If you got the Holy Ghost, clap your hands. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8 it said, Ye shall, not might, not maybe, not could be, chance of, after a while. When you mature in God, 
after you've went on a 40-day fast and prayed three hours a day for 40 days? No. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now hold on before you clap about that because most of the people that get the Holy Ghost in our order are steeped in sin when they walk down here. Some of them was drunk last night. Some of them was shooting something in their vein last night. Some of them slept with someone they ain't married to last night. Some of them lied yesterday. Some of them stole yesterday. And by the way, before you get too pharisaical, Paul said, such were some of you. He didn't say once they go through journey, Sister Jane. He didn't say once they've been here, once they've started putting them little envelopes in and paying tithes. He didn't say once their hair's long enough. He didn't say once they're this or that. He said ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. The moment you invite the Holy Ghost into your life and the Spirit of the living God fills you and you become the temple of the Holy Ghost. God's in you. I said God is in you. And that makes you powerful. Now if you let the Holy Ghost do its work, the Bible said the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. First order of business is let the Holy Ghost make out of you what the Holy Ghost wants you to be. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Are you ready? Ephesians 3 and 20 said, Now unto him that is able. Now unto him that is able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above. All that we ask or think. What am I trying to do today? I'm trying to change your thinking. I'm trying to help you get a revelation That's going to change what you think you know. Going to change what you believe. Going to change how you see things. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Do you know you can't ask for anything too big for God? Do you know you can't even think of something that's beyond God's ability? Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Here it is. According to the power that's out there in the universe somewhere. Huh? According to the power that resides at 600 Happy Acres Road. No. According to the power that worketh in you. You're powerful right now. Whether you've ever used it or not, you are powerful right now. You're already, you don't have to get powerful. If you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got the spirit of the one that created this entire universe living inside of you. And it's already at work. There's a lot of people say, I've never seen a miracle. Sure you have. You're a walking miracle. One of the most precious men in our church. Never met his father until he was in his 20s. Never knew who he was. His mother, there's a big long story there. He's raised by his grandma. He's worked hard all of his life, had a rough life. I mean, you talk about hurdles to get over. And he was in the office talking to me about him and his wife wanting to have a baby. And he said, the biggest fear we got, she come from this kind of a home, I come from that kind of a home. And the biggest fear we got is how our babies are going to be born and raised up in this wicked world. I said, no, you're you're determining that your kids are going to have it hard because you had it hard. But when God worked the miracle in you, hold on, he worked the miracle in your seed that's going to come down the road somewhere. When your babies are going to be born, they're not going to be, they're not going to wait till they're 20 something to know their dad. When your babies are born, they're not going to grow up in a drug infested alcohol lifestyle. They're not going to be raised by grandma. They're going to be raised by you and your wife. They're a miracle. The miracle has already happened. The miracle's already at work. (laughs) 
Say, I used to smoke two packs a day. I don't smoke now. That's a miracle. You can't hardly do that on your own. I used to be a drunk. Now I'm not. That's a miracle. I used to be a drug addict. Now I'm not. That's a miracle. I used to be on my way to hell. Now I'm on the way to heaven. That's a miracle. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Shout yes. yes. You, as a Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled believer, I'm going to keep hammering it, are more powerful than the devil. Mm, you know what I feel in my spirit? I feel like we're getting it. I feel like in my spirit. I didn't feel this morning what I feel right now. We're getting a hold of it. We're believing it. We're wrapping our mind around it. You know what that is? That's revelation. Revelation is at work. When God causes you to see something you didn't see before. When God calls you to know something that you didn't know before. That's revelation at work. You need to be sitting there all the time I'm preaching saying, God, I want these revelations. I want to know about the power the devil's got. I want to know about the power of God and I want to know about the power that's at work in me. I want these revelations. Somebody shout yes. yes. Shout yes. yes. Shout yes. yes. First John 4 and 4. Oh, I wish you could see my notes. You see how I do those verses? In this verse, greater is he. I've got he in the widest bold on my computer, 50 points. Greater is he that is in you than he. I've got an ultra thin small type. I want you all to get the revelation I've got of what's in me and what's in the world. I want you to get the revelation that I have of how powerful God is and how little power the devil has in my life. Greater is he that's in you. Elbow your neighbor and say, that's you. Elbow somebody on the other side. Say, that's you. He didn't say you is in Bible World Church. It would be something if that verse meant greater is he that is in Bible World Church. If it took all of us being in one mind and one accord to whoop the devil, it would still be an amazing verse, but that isn't what it means. He said greater is he that's in you, Robert Thorpe. Greater is he that's in you, Rodney Sears. Greater is he that is in you, Kelsey Wilkins. Greater is he that is in you, Allie. Greater is he that is in you, Callie. Greater is he that is in you, young people, than, than he that is in the world. I'm not talking about a conglomeration of people. I'm not talking even about the verses that said two or three, two, that two or three agree on one thing, it shall be done. That's talking about signs, wonders, and miracles but when it comes to dealing with the devil every one of you can send him packing every one of you has power over the devil every one of you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world we had a crusade one time and in that crusade we had Seems to me like 50, 55 people received the Holy Ghost for the first time in one night in a church in St. Louis, Missouri. After church, I went into a back room where they sent me. I went back there and Brother Jerry Jones, who's general secretary then of the United Pentecostal Church International, we're sitting in that back room together and all of a sudden, here comes four or five young people, maybe a little older than these on the front row. They bust into that room. Brother Cunningham, Brother Cunningham, you got to come out here. There's a boy on the front row full of the devil. Come on, you got to come. It's an emergency. So I get up and follow the boys out of the room. I get out front and they're right, right on the front row. About four chairs, they got him laying across the chairs. I'm not making this up. One Bible school student is sitting on each leg. One Bible school student holding each arm. It's amazing how people that think the devil's powerful 
And if he was half as powerful as Hollywood makes him, you couldn't hold him there. I'm not making this up. One Bible school student is sitting on his torso. Sitting on him. One's behind his head. Not making it up. And there's three little women on the second row. Elder saints, godly little ladies. They got their hankies out. I'm not joking you. And they're swinging that hanky like this. And they're going, jeez, 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 jeez. I was tired. I preached. I prayed 55 people through the Holy Ghost. I walked out there and I said, let him up. They looked at me like I just said, I believe in the Trinity. I said, let him up. Get off of him. So one gets off one leg. The other one kind of eases off the other leg like, oh, don't want him to get me. One lets go of one arm, one lets go of the other, and there goes the three, no joke, there goes the three little women down the side aisle. Gee, 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 they're running away. Gee, 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 gee. And when they're all off of him, he looks up at me and in some, sounded like a Swedish accent, something over there, he looked at me and said, my name is, I said, shut up. I'm, I said, shut up. You ain't going to do nothing. And guess what? Devils understand the hillbilly word ain't. <laughs> we made that up in West Virginia, by the way. And now it's in the dictionary. We were saying that years before it got in the dictionary. I'm going, I said, you ain't doing nothing. Shut your mouth. He laid there and looked at me. And I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of him right now. And when I said that, boy, it's like he fainted on the front row. He just just went limp on the front row. Those Bible school kids got him back around him again. They set him up on the seat. And about three minutes later, he was speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Rest of the story, my wife is my witness. She was there. They prayed him through to the Holy Ghost. They took him and baptized him in Jesus' name. The Bible school kids talked him into going to Bible school. And today he is a United Pentecostal Church preacher. So, oh, Brother Cunningham, didn't you have a chicken foot or something to... Wave over him. Didn't you have some kind of water? Wasn't there, what, didn't you maybe need to go get the other men out of the back room and get a crowd around him? No, 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 no. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he. I want you to get the revelation. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, somebody. This church, you better sit down on this one. This church is so powerful. Are you ready? Are y'all sure you're ready for the deepest thing I've said all day long? We cast out hundreds of devils around here without paying them any attention at all. Somebody walks into this atmosphere full of the devil and we begin to worship and magnify God and young people fill this altar. I'm telling you the devil leaves with no incident. The devil leaves. You're more powerful than you know you are. Come on somebody. You are more powerful than you know you are. Brother Rivera is my memory anymore, but about six or eight months ago when I was in church and that preacher got up and said the devil comes to every service, middle of last year. About the middle of last year I was preaching a conference and a guy in the pulpit got up and said the devil's the most faithful person to our church. 
Devil comes every service. Every time we open the door, I hollered out loud, shame on you. I got news for you. There ain't a devil within two miles of this place right now. They don't want nothing to do with what's going on here. They don't want nothing to do with you. They don't want nothing to do with your worship. They don't want nothing to do with this kind of preaching and a revelation of the power that works in us. If, if there's ever a devil around here, he may come around tonight at midnight when nobody's here. He may go tell Lucifer, you know what, I'm going to go up there and check out that church. They had good church today. Lucifer said, be careful. Because if there's one little old woman in there praying, you're in trouble. If there's one teenager in there talking to God or worshiping, you're in trouble. There may be some devils that hang out here when we're not here, but I got news for you. The first one of you that put a key in that door and turned it and opened the door, or the first one that puts a key in one of those doors and turns it and opens the door, the devil's looking for a way out of here. He's looking for a back door. He don't want nothing to do with you. He don't want nothing to do with this church. We need a revelation of the mighty God in us. You need a revelation of greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Clap your hands again and shout yes. You may be seated. I'm going to close on this. There's a lot of talk about prophetic, end time prophetic signs of the time, if you please. Well, we're talking about all kind of stuff. We're talking about the rise of the Antichrist. Do you know that even Fox News and CNN and MSNBC and NBC and ABC and CBS and all of them, all of the major media, very seldom gets through a nude broadcast today that they don't use the word Armageddon. They'll talk about something happening in the world. They say, that's Armageddon-like. We're living in a day when everybody's watching the signs of the time. I had people ask me not too long ago, said, do you think the Antichrist is alive? I said, I do. Unless Jesus isn't coming for at least 31 years. Because he's going to mimic the life and ministry of Christ to the T. He's going to fake everybody out. And if he's not born yet, I got good news for you. We got 31 more years. That isn't good news. I'd love to go be with Jesus tonight. Well, Brother Cunningham, if you think he's alive, then who is he? Why haven't we figured out yet who he is? Are you ready? You got your Bibles? Open it to 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8. And if you have on your phone or iPad the ability to go to the Amplified version of the Bible, I'm going to read to you from the Amplified Bible. I'm fixing to tell you how powerful the church is. Are you ready? Are you ready to see how powerful the church is? In 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8, it says, For the mystery of lawlessness, rebellion against divine authority, and the coming reign of lawlessness, the spirit of Antichrist is already at work. How many of you would say, man, I believe that? Already at work, the spirit of Antichrist. But it is restrained only until he who now restrains it. Only until he who now restrains it The church is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Here's how powerful the devil is. The Antichrist can't even be revealed until the church is gone. The Antichrist can't even take over until the church is taken out of the way. As long as we're here... Oh, my 
my God have mercy. I feel revelation in this house. I feel revelation in this house. Preacher, if this is such an important revelation, if this is such an important revelation, then why haven't we got it before now? Because if there's one thing the devil don't want you to know, it's how much power God has, how he has no power, and how much power is in you. Because he knows that when you figure out how much power you've got, I'm not talking about in your flesh, in your brain, in your education, in your talent or ability. I'm talking about strong in the Lord. When he, when you figure out how much power you've got that's resident working in you, honey, it's going to change how you witness. It's going to change how you pray. It's going to change how you worship. It's going to change how we build this church. When we get it in our mind, God is in us. God is at work in us. Mm. Stand with me just a second. I want everybody to draw as close to God as you can possibly do it right now. I want you to pray in the Spirit. I want you to focus your attention on Him. I want you to let Him seal the revelation that He's given you today. I want you to let Him make it real in your mind and your heart. I want Him. To, I want you to let Him anoint you. Let Him anoint the revelation that He's given to you. Let it take root in your heart right now. Get as close to Him as you can get. Draw nigh unto God and He'll draw nigh unto you. Reach out and touch Him and He'll reach out and touch you. Some of you that have an unsaved spouse, you need this revelation. Some of you that got unsaved children and family, you need this revelation. Some of you that feel the call of God on your life, you need this revelation. Some of you that want to do more for God, you need this revelation. You need to get a hold of this revelation. Oh God! Come on, pray church, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray. Halamanda yada bahashatai. He do do da 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 banda yada bahataya. Ando do 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 bohushato da 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 mahaya. Don't be afraid to allow the Spirit to pray through you. Don't be afraid to allow the Spirit to pray through you. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. I want everybody that's hungry for more revelation. I want you to come out of where you are and let's line around this platform, both sides, the front, down the aisles. If you're hungry for revelation, come praying. When you get down here, pray. When you get to this altar, make a covenant with God. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I want that revelation in my mind. I want it in my heart. I want it in my spirit. I want you to baptize my brain. I want you to baptize my spirit. I want that revelation of how powerful God is, how little power the devil has over us, and the power that's at work in me. All of you that are watching from home, 
I want to challenge you to go to prayer in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever you're watching. Turn it into a prayer room. Turn it into a prayer room. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are, turn it into a prayer room. Yes, 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 yes. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. I want you to know there's hundreds and hundreds of people here that are hungry for revelation. I promise you God is going to hear your prayer. Oh, yes, yes, yes. In da 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 banda yada boho koto yada da da bahaya. Ida da 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 banda yada boho koto yada da da mahaya. There is such power in this room right now. There is so much Holy Ghost in this room right now. Revelation is at work in this house right now. Oh God, oh God, oh God. In da 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 banda ya da bolo da 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 manda ya da bolo da 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 mahanda ya da da bahata ya da da bahaya. He da 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 banda da 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 manda ya da bolo koto ya da 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 bahaya. I know we're not laying hands on one another, but would you raise your hands to heaven and pray for the people around you? It's okay to look and see who's around you if you want, but I want you to pray. I want you to pray the prayer of faith. I want you to pray in power. Don't lay hands on one another, but pray for one another. Pray for one another. Look around you. Pray for one another. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. He la da 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 banda ya da mahando da 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 mahata ya da da bahaya. I want every mother in here to know your prayers are working. Your prayers are working. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. I want every father in here that prays for his marriage and prays for his family. I want you to know your prayers are working. Come on, somebody. I want every child of God to know that God's hearing your prayers. They work. Yes, yes, yes.
Yes, 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 yes.